The ocean drives everything around here. It's really striking that Los Angeles is so ocean-oriented, and yet there are so many people who never have the chance, never have the opportunity to, to make it to the ocean. These teachers work in the area, so the ocean's not that far away, but many of their students have never had the opportunity to go to the ocean. And in fact, some of the teachers had not gone to these beaches, uh, even with their own families. And so one of the real hopes we have is that with this program, we lower those barriers of getting to the ocean. The program we just did here was a week-long program called Dive into Marine Biodiversity. And it was targeted at a group of teachers who are STEM teachers, all science and math teachers, who are in-service teachers and enrolled in a program at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Our university, geographically speaking, is surrounded by an area that unfortunately we have a lot of uh, schools that are sometimes referred to as high-need schools. It's, it's part of our mission, it's part of our DNA as a California State University to do what we can to respond to the needs of the communities. And we respond by preparing highly qualified teachers. You won't believe this, but I remember a few years ago we were doing a survey uh, of the number of students who have been to the San Pedro area or have been even to the, to the beach area. And they only live like, like 15, 20 minutes away and a large number of them have never been there. And that really just like uh, blew us away. So we decided at that time to develop this strong partnership with the National Student Museum. I grew up in South Central, so super close around the area. Um, several students I know in my community, I've talked to so many, <laughs> they're like, like, yeah, I don't go to the beach. I hate the beach or I hate the ocean. Like, I know what they're going through kind of, so I feel like that gives me an advantage just connecting with them, with the low income, uh, being Latinx, Hispanic, or just being female. I feel like as a first year teacher, as the more I educate myself, the more I get to educate my students. So I just felt like it would be an awesome experience for me. So because I live in the desert, the only thing we really see are coyotes. <laughs> so it's completely different from being around the ocean. So the diversity in crabs of that type of body form is really immense. It's a really cool... So one of the things that is clear to all of us, I think, who've been in school and been taught um, is that teachers who teach with a passion are the ones who reach us. For teachers to teach with passion, they have to love the thing they're teaching. And that's part of what we wanted to do, is give the teachers those experiences that they can then translate directly into the classroom. All right, my friends, we are in the rocky inner tidal area. Typically, the tide will come up this high during a good storm season during the winter. The waves will come all the way up here. Um, hopefully, I'm able to create some lessons with this whole week and then do those lessons with the students and maybe even have a field trip out of it, definitely. On their first year, I know first year is pretty tough, so I'm definitely looking forward to talk to those year teachers, like 15 plus years, like, okay, how did you do your first year? Like, I'm hoping just to gain, like, from their experiences, kind of apply them to myself. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. <laughs> oh. What happened? Adam, there's a play structure now. Like <laughs> <laughs> an octopus. Octopus. Yeah. It is oh. an octopus? Yeah. 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 Wow. Because <laughs> um, the school I'm going to be working in, they're transforming to an uh, Austin school. So hopefully, when I start, I can inform them about this, because I would have a lot of fun with them if I would be able to come with my students. So after the year that we've had by just being indoors with COVID, having to learn on a computer, now that we have a chance, we want to bring the students back outdoors, do labs, be interactive, and bringing them out of their houses into nature, get back out here in life.
those organisms are reasonably widespread across the shelf. It's not like, you know, oh my god, we hit the one spot where these things exist. Yeah. One of the things they realized of like how many of these activities, how close the ocean is, that are available at low cost, no cost, and are accessible not only to them as teachers, but also to the families of their students. You might have noticed that we only have five crew today, and, and if you're thinking, is that enough to run this boat? And the answer is no. That's why this is a training vessel, and you are now the crew. So we're gonna be um, asking you to help out in pulling some of the lines. And you three are entering into different age groups and different subjects. And so has this sort of met your needs as far as what you can bring back to your kids? Yes, it expanded like the ideas that I've had for my students and so I'm excited to just use some creativity and figure out ways to like incorporate this in my curriculum and just get my students out of the classroom right. and bring, you know, professionals into the classroom. Right. <laughs> um, I definitely feel like it has gotten me excited and even more interested to learn on my own more about uh, the ocean. So because I'm excited, I'm able to bring that excitement to my future students as well. So just imagine, one in two in Los Angeles County out of Latino or Hispanic uh, origin, yet less than one in ten in STEM field. So that, that should tell us something, right? Like, what are we doing? And programs like this really level the playing field, meaning that if you don't engage them with fun, exciting experiences, how will they be inspired to pursue uh, STEM as a major or to pursue STEM as a career, right? Uh, the coastline provides jobs. The coastline provides really good jobs, um, ranging from port uh, jobs through fishing jobs and the now growing blue technology kind of jobs. So if people are not even in touch physically, going to see the ocean and aware of what resources are there, they're probably not going to consider that as a career option. These new blue economy jobs are ones that are being developed now and this generation of students coming through from kindergarten upwards are going to be filling these niches that they've never had opportunity before. Our mission here at the Natural History Museum has multiple pieces to it. One part of the mission is what the public sees every day if they come and visit the galleries, the uh, mission to translate science into information for people who can come and enjoy that. Another part of our mission is the research that we do in the back end of, of the museum, which is not as public. But then a third part of the mission is making it possible for teachers to learn things about natural history, which in this museum also includes human history, and bring that to their schools. I love doing it retail, as it were, with individual people who come and visit, but it feels so wonderful to get to a teacher knowing that they're going to interact with hundreds of students. It's about making opportunities available in an environment and available that is very near and dear to me, the ocean environment, and making it accessible to a lot more people here in Los Angeles.